So we're no longer going to drift through our industry and say, well, I'm a personal trainer. Well, what do you do? You know, I help people with boot camps. I also do one-on-one training. I own a gym. We do a little bit of CrossFit type training. And uh, I have this Instagram account where I kind of make meal plans and stuff. And I sell a couple of eBooks a month. Ah, That's all over the place, man. That's all over the place. Be clear on the vision. Yes, you're going to help people through fitness and change lives. But what is the vision? Because once you see the vision, then you know the path. The path might be not running local body fat test tables at the local grocery store. It might be going all in on social media marketing, on podcasts to build your brand globally, right? But as you fine tune the purpose and the vision, the path becomes clear. And this is our job to show you that. And so with that, to help you get there, now that you know that, okay, I've got a gift and I need clarity of purpose and vision and path, how do I get there? Well, I'm gonna get there through the 3D method. There's three Ds, three Ds, three words that start with D that are gonna help you achieve not only massive success in the path that you're taking, but with that significance, with that significance. So D number one, of course, You've got to decide. You've got to decide that this is your path and stick to it no matter what. I've seen more people fail because they're idea people, but they never execute. So that we have to decide that we're going to be part of that 1%. Believe it or not, 1% of the population. And once you are part of that 1%, you now have an obligation and duty. See, I have an obligation and a duty. I know what my gift from above is. I know what my gift is. I told you I have a two-part gift to help you become the best entrepreneur you can be and through you to help you get more clients so that I, along with you, can reach more people with our fitness message, right? So I have an obligation and duty to constantly sharpen my sword every year, year after year, and become the best and deliver the best and coach and consult the best. I sell my vision, I sell my purpose. Because I have an obligation and a duty to my family, to our industry, to your clients. Now I don't take that lightly, man. See, I've made that decision to commit. And when you do, you must abandon criticism, failures, adversity, even the need for approval, you have to abandon. One of my clients recently said that I've got a fire a trainer, but he's one of my best trainers and all my clients love him. So why do you have to fire him? Huh, well, you know, he was uh, stooping one client. Oh, wow, not good, not good. So fire him, that's what you gotta do. I don't know, man, my clients are gonna be upset because he's one of my best trainers. Instead of doing what's right, he was thinking about doing what's popular, which is not firing this cancer. Do you understand that? That is the wrong decision, man. You cannot be approval seeking. You cannot worry about criticism of others. This is my path. Look up Bedros Koulian reviews. You'll see so much hate posts about me, it'll blow your mind. I'm from bodybuilding.com to pissconsumer.com, right? I don't care. The criticism doesn't bother me. The adversity that they put in front of me doesn't bother me. I don't seek out the approval of others. And of course, you've gotta go obsessed. You can't just dabble, you can't just put your toe into the pool. You gotta get obsessed, go all in, go all in. If you're gonna commit to this, go all in or go find another industry. You burn the boats, right, you burn the boats. How are we gonna win this war, they asked him. So, well, we have no choice. Gentlemen, we've burnt the boats. We either die on this island or we own it. You burn the boats, you go all in, you get obsessed. So then, the third D is discipline. And you gotta be disciplined in one, two, three, these three areas. So let's talk about this, health discipline. Well, what do you mean, Bedros? Here's what I mean. As an entrepreneur, we deal with shit that our employees and our friends who have jobs will never have to understand. So because of that, we have to keep our health up. You have to always beat your fight weight. Do you agree? 
So you can't go around hanging out with losers, drinking excessively, waking up with a hangover, walking through molasses during your workday, because you have to make decisions faster than anyone else. And the decisions you make impact people's health, their fitness, your income, and the income of your teams. If you have more than one employee, raise your hand. That's pressure, right? Knowing that you pay someone else's bills, that is some responsibility, right? That is some responsibility. So you've got to get your sleep in. You've got to eat right. You've got to make sure that your mental headspace is tight, that you're always surrounding yourself with the right people who are going to build you up and not tear you down. And as an entrepreneur, you've got to stay on the cutting edge of how business works. If you think that you are going to clean toilets, restock tissues, and tampons in the women's restroom, he said tampons, he, he, he. If you think you're gonna do that shit and then vacuum and then clean the glass and then spray sanitizer, those are things that you would pay someone $20 an hour to or less to do. If you're doing things that you could pay someone $20 an hour or less to do, you are killing yourself. That is entrepreneurial suicide. Do you understand that? Because the guy or gal that I'm coaching who's in your town competing against you is doing what's in their 5%. They are entrepreneurially disciplined. They're doing the things that make money, get clients, produce results. That's it. That's it. So if you're both working 10 hours a day, this guy or gal is hyper-focused because they have entrepreneurial discipline. And you're like, yeah, but I got to market. I got to make my Facebook funnel. You do? Well, you're not a Facebook marketing expert. You don't look like one to me. You got muscles. There's a room full of Facebook marketing experts just on the other side of this wall. Let them do the work for you. Do you understand that? That's entrepreneurial discipline. So if you can follow these three disciplines, so you make that decision, you get disciplined in these three areas because you're a fighter jet. Ain't no way you're gonna take a crop duster to war because guess what happens? If we need a squadron of five fighter jets to go and we got four fighter jets and one, one crop duster and they gotta fly in formation, well, that means these four fighter jets have to slow down to keep up with this crop duster. And guess what happens when a fighter jet slows down? It falls out of the sky. It needs speed. It needs speed. So you got to be high speed, high performance, and hang out with people and have thoughts that are high speed and high performance. Do you understand that? Yes? Yes. yes. Next, we dominate. We've made the decision on our path. We've become disciplined. And now we dominate. This is where the work begins, right? Guess what, folks? We have to do the work. We have to do the work. Let me tell you this. Let me look at all three quadrants. We have to do the work. We have to do the work. We have to do the work. We can't go around telling people what our vision is and say, one day I'm going to write a book. You have to sit down and write a thousand words every morning if you're going to write a book. That book's not going to write itself, right? You got to do the work. So what I say is don't fall in love with the destination of helping 2,000 people online, or 500 people with your local gym, or writing five New York Times bestsellers. Don't fall in love with the outcome. What? What the hell are you talking about, B? Fall in love with the work. Fall in love with the work. And when you fall in love with the work, the outcome is a given. It's 100%. It's a given. It's a byproduct. But you got to do the work, and you got to fall in love with the work, and you got to do the work every day, folks. That's how you dominate. And then you surround yourself with winners and mentors. You surround yourself with other people who are doing the work. See, when I see how hard Craig works and I get an email from him at 3 in the morning, I want to be the guy that responds at 3.01. For that to happen, i got to wake up super early, don't I? It bothers me when I respond at 5 a.m., right? So I surround myself with winners. And even when I didn't have high expectations of myself, I surrounded myself with people who are doing better than me. Yeah, so, when you dominate, you surround yourself with winners and you do the work. But you also have to focus on the 5% that matter. Because if you try and focus on things that can be done by others for $20 or less, you are going to be in this place of stuck forever. You know, why is the guy that started at the same time that I did so far ahead of me when I'm not? Because when you focus on the 5% that matter, you get ahead faster. What is the 5% for you? It's to delegate, motivate, sell. And I'll break that down for you real quick. I'll start in reverse. Selling. What does selling mean? 
You're gonna sell people face-to-face -face or in groups, obviously, if you do a group closing, like you follow my group closing program or my closed clients face-to-face -face program. You're gonna sell leads into paying clients. That's important, that's important. That's turning a lead into money. That's important. But part of selling is also getting that lead, marketing. That doesn't mean you have to set up the funnel. That means you have to come up with the funnel idea or go buy the funnel idea and then hire the person to run, to run the funnel for you on Facebook. Get the email platform and set it up so it can automate your email marketing for you. See, selling consists of marketing and conversion. So when I say delegate, motivate, sell, the sell part is lead generation and conversion from lead to client. That's in your 5%. Now what about the motivate? Let me explain. You motivate your clients and you need to motivate your team. How? You get them on the same page. Every Monday morning I send out an email to my team, to my headquarters team. Every Tuesday I go on the Fit Body Bootcamp Facebook group and I do a video. I get them all on the same page. I motivate them and remind them of their path, their purpose, their vision. It's important to do that. It's important to motivate your clients. And you remember, every single one of you should have a private Facebook group for your clients. And when you do, you just go live in there Monday morning and say, look, I don't care what you ate over the weekend. I don't want you to beat yourself up the rest of the week. I hope that you've prepped something and you're gonna get the most out of your Monday morning because when you win your Monday morning, you win your Monday. When you win your Monday, you win your week. So go out there and dominate with your diet and your workouts and I'll see you at the gym today. It's a great live video that you can do. It took me about 30 seconds to do. You motivate your clients. You write a group email to your trainers and to your staff and you remind them, we're there to serve, we're there to sell. <gasps> he said the sell word. Yes, we're there to serve, we're there to sell. Because if we have no one to sell to, we have no one to serve. Do you agree? Yeah. Yes. So then finally, we have to delegate. And if you have business partners or you have team members, odds are you're doing too much. You have to delegate the things off your plate. You delegate to your trainers what the workouts are. You don't say, I made you a workout to run. You say, make the workout, make sure I bless it before you run it. You see the difference? You making the workout is you doing a job that someone for $20 or less can do. You delegating, make the workout, make sure I bless it before you run it. Now you're doing what a leader does. You see the difference? That's one less thing you have to do. Yeah, but it takes me 10 minutes to make a workout. It does, okay, great. So there's 10 minutes there to make a workout. There's about five minutes to shift gears into that, five minutes to shift gears out of that. So there's 20 minutes. You give me 20 minutes and an iPhone and 10 leads, and I will call those motherfuckers up and get those leads to come in here. <laughs> see, I will do the selling. I want the phone and the phone numbers. Not the making, but no one can make workouts. Shut up. No one can make workouts as good as, who the fuck, what are you, who, who are you, right? Who can guess this one? Yeah, yeah, you only get paid for done. This is it, man, you only get paid for done. Make no mistake about it. All your ideas mean nothing. People go, hey, Bedros, I had the same idea as you when you had High Tech Trainer. I was gonna create a program that they could download onto their Palm Pilots, and then when the iPhones came out, I go, why didn't you do it? See, I execute, I execute, I believe in speed of implementation because I only get paid when it's done. I don't go, oh, I had that idea, that's my fucking money. No, it's not, that's my money. That's that person's money because they execute. You only get paid for done, remember that. You do the work, you surround yourself with winners and mentors who are gonna help you do it better. You focus on the 5% that matter and delegate, motivate, and sell. And you keep remembering that I only get paid for done when the book is published, when the gym is open and full, when that info product or that coaching program, you're getting applications in or sales of that product, left and right. And then you have to be resilient like the weed. You've heard me say this before. An everyday garden weed can split concrete and grow right out of it, can split asphalt and grow right out of it. I've seen garden weed growing out of sand. I've seen garden weed growing out of a side of a tree. I've seen a garden weed growing out of a telephone pole. I've seen a garden weed on a stop sign. Somehow that weed got so, the root got so long that it was coming out from underneath the stop sign on that metal pole. Home Depot or Lowe's has yet to sell a product that is so powerful that you could spray on a garden weed and kill the damn thing. It comes back angrier, meaner, stronger. 
and says, what you got? Right? So you have to be resilient like a garden weed because the world is going to come at you. The world is going to come at you because when you do something great, guess what happens? Adversity begins to creep up. People begin to have fear. People begin to criticize. Those are all the different sprays. Those are the concretes. And you just split right through and you come back stronger like a weed. Yeah, I get it. We all want to be a pretty little orchid. It's beautiful. It's nice. No one's ever going to put a weed in a little pot and take it to a, take it to a dinner party. You will go buy an orchid and take it to a dinner party. But that orchid, when the humidity is off, when the soil's not right, if you plant something else next to it, the orchid dies. It is fragile. The weed is resilient. It's on every continent and in every country. Can't say that about the orchid. You gotta be resilient like the weed, right? And so when you've got this dominator's mindset, When you're disciplined in your health, in your self-growth, and as an entrepreneur, and when you've made the decision that this is your path and you're sticking to it, you're considered a dominator.